Welcome back from that thrilling race. But first of all, who's to blame for the crash that took out both Perez and Sainz? From the stewards' assessment, neither of the drivers was at fault for the incident, and it was a racing incident according to the stewards. In my analysis, both drivers were chasing Leclerc's slipstream, Sainz was ahead and entitled to the racing line, Perez was alongside also hunting for the slipstream ahead to outdrag the Ferrari. Signs slightly moved left because that was the racing line and Perez, with limited vision from the direct sunlight, wasn't able to notice signs varying towards the left. That is my conclusion about the crash. McLaren's rear wing again is raising questions about the legality of their car. The DRS flap at high load flexes and opens up a tiny gap, reducing drag compared to others whose DRS flap doesn't flex to that magnitude. F1's regulation body FIA clarified that no team on the grid is bleaching the regulations. That leaves us with one conclusion. McLaren is not cheating. They are just so intelligent to push the rules to the limit, but not bleach them. Red Bull is now second in the constructor's title, but can Ferrari also dislodge them from second? Ferrari is now second behind McLaren in the pecking order. The upgraded Ferrari has improved significantly that now it's fighting for race wins with the McLarens, which came as a surprise to me, I will admit. In Singapore, I expect the race to be won by the McLaren or the Ferrari boys. Red Bull and Mercedes at the moment are lipping backward. Christian Horner, as usually, is trying to deny reality. Horner believes there's still chances to catch up. Speaking to the media, he said, We're pushing hard. We're now not defending, we're chasing. It changes the dynamic again, and we're just going to throw everything at it. We've still got seven races and two sprint races to go. There are a lot of points up for grabs, and a lot of different circuits coming up. So it's far from over. Reflecting on the 51-lap Baku race, Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff noted that his outfit will not be fooling itself, as it is perfectly aware of the fact that Ferrari and McLaren are currently quicker at the moment. We will take the positive from today that we were able to get one car on the podium. Inheriting a podium and finishing third is better than we expected, but we are not fooling ourselves that on pace today, we were P5. Mercedes trackside engineer director Andrew Shovlin confessed that his team was not strong enough to earn a podium finish on merit, but the W15 displayed an encouraging speed on Pirelli's hard tires. It was nice to get a car on the podium, but we aren't fooling ourselves. This weekend hasn't been good enough and we need to improve. The first stint for both drivers was weak. We couldn't stop the rear tires from overheating, and at one point it was looking like we were in for a very difficult afternoon. The hard tire suited us much better. George had clean air to work out how to get the best out of the tires and maintain them in a good window. That served him well later in the race. We'd lost too much time early on in the race to stick with the leaders, but it was good to get the pass on Verstappen done, and that proved crucial for the podium. Speaking to F1 TV after the race, Russell revealed his fluctuating pace was down to the tires. He said, It was such an odd race. The first half of the race, we were 1.5 seconds off the pace. The last 20 laps, I was a second quicker than Oscar and Charles, and three-tenths quicker than Max, Checo, and Carlos. It's the same circuit, same driver, same car. We just went from a yellow tire to a white tire. We all need serious conversations again about what's going on. Because we've got 2,000 people working hard to deliver the fastest car. 20 laps we had a car that was comfortable fighting for victory. For 20 other laps we had a car that shouldn't be in the points. The only difference is the tires. It's not good enough, really. Mercedes is at the moment blaming the tire manufacturer for the dismal W15 performance. The tires are making it difficult for the Brackley team to find a car setup that works for both tire compounds. Now that we know who's winning the constructor's title, the race is on in the championship title. Who comes out on top in Abu Dhabi? Gives me 2021 vibes. Thank you for watching. Championship can only be won by one, and it's going Dutch in 2021.